Do you ever wonder how much businesses actually make? And what about these ones, soft play businesses? Well, I can tell you how much they make because I've opened 10 of them. And in this video, I'm gonna share all. So here's the average revenue of our play centers, about 500,000 pounds per year after VAT. But the big question we all wanna know, gang, is this, what the profit? So you might be thinking, well, why is James gonna share all these juicy numbers about his personal business with YouTube? Well, I'm doing it because I want you to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I want you to hit that like button and I want you to comment below. Let's get into it. This stick insect represents me, a 21 year old me, because that was the year that I opened our first indoor soft play center. It was called Party Man World in Basildon in Essex. And I'm gonna take you through my thought process of those early years. I'm 35 right now. Now, but I want you to understand this story so you can put into context the problems that I've had and the money that I turned in the early years and how that changed and how I've repaired going forward. That might sound a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna reveal all and I'll give you the profit numbers as well, so make sure you stick around. Stage number one was I was a magician. I was a kid's entertainer. In fact, when I was 16, 17, I was earning 1,500 quid a week doing kids' parties and I was fully booked. I was literally running around Essex and Hertfordshire and Kent doing these kids' parties and people said, hey, have you got a venue that we could come to? And that's when my mind started to change. Because as a magician, I was literally earning my money using my hands, doing magic tricks and balloon models. And I thought, actually, if I build a venue, people could come to me. And if I got ill, the money could still come in. If I went on holiday, the money could still come in. And I realized that most business owners, most businesses were swapping time for money. It was the first flirtation with leverage, if you like, where I could leverage my knowledge, leverage my ideas to build a business that worked without me in it. So this is what I wanted to do. I opened up a soft play center. That was my second stage. The third stage was, how do you finance this? As 21 years old, I've got no real money around me other than the income that I'd saved up from doing my parties. I'd actually bought a few houses by then, but I didn't have what I thought was gonna be half a million, 750,000 pounds needed to open my first family entertainment center. I didn't know about numbers, about profit and loss. I just knew how to get customers which by the way, I still think is the ultimate goal for entrepreneurs as a skill set. because if you know how to get customers, you know how to get revenue in, you'll always find a way to save the day. Next stage was what we're we gonna do. Well, 750,000 pounds is the amount that I borrowed. Now I couldn't just get one loan from a bank because they didn't really trust me. I was 20 years old, 21 years old. I was barely just a teenager. So I managed to borrow it from 21 different lenders and added up, I was paying back 21 and a half thousand pounds every single month to get my first play center over the line. So what revenue did I do in that first year? Well, with my entertainment business and the soft play center, we did a million pounds worth of revenue in my first year in 2007. And I needed that money to service that 21 and a half thousand pounds. So in the early years, all I was doing was servicing debt. I was making profit, but all the profit was going on the debts. Everything's good. So what happens in stage number six? Well, we start to have problems. We're generating revenue. We're paying back the debt. What possibly could be going wrong? Because you just have to keep at it for three, four, five years. You've paid your debts off and everything's great, isn't it? Mm. Well, here's three problems that I identified for this business. Number one, LBT, that's low barrier to entry. I realized that other people could open up soft play centers around me, even if they wasn't as good as me, they only needed a few hundred thousands of pounds and they could still 10 to 30% of my market share. So running a low barrier to entry business can really hurt you, like a restaurant, like a nightclub, like any new leisure business that opens up in your town. If it's too low barrier to entry, people can compete with you very easily. The second stage, is fickle customers. Because of that, people are fickle. Like they go, oh, there's a new restaurant in the town. Even though I'm really loyal to this restaurant that I've been going to for years, I wanna try that new restaurant. And when you use businesses that are fickle, you can lose some of your million pounds worth of revenue very easily. Third problem is extreme highs to extreme lows. And I'm gonna give you a little graph to explain what I mean here. Let's do it. Now, most businesses don't work like this. I open the business on day one and the revenue just goes through the roof really, really quick. So this is like in the this is like by month 12, your highest revenue by month 12. And actually, if I'll tell you the truth, it was more like this. Like the second we opened the doors, hundreds of thousands of pounds came in. People loved it because it's a it's a new restaurant, it's a new thing in town. So you've got these what we're calling extreme highs here. The problem is, after time, it goes down very, very quickly. Now, this is not a usual business. What happens in a usual business is this, you make losses in the beginning, 
and slowly build up and then you plateau out. With an indoor leisure business like Soft Play, you build up really high, then you plateau down and then you level out. That's really dangerous because if you're new into entrepreneurship, right, being me, a 21 year old, I thought I was Richard Branson, Steve Jobs in the early days. I was literally handling hundreds of thousands of pounds worth of cash really, really quickly. So I went on this aggressive expansion plan. I opened up another two play centers within the first year of the first one. I was really going like gangbusters and then it just started dipping. Service was good, competition opened, the customers were fickle because they wanted to go and check out the other competition. So it's at year three is when it really started to level out and then you've got that half a million pounds worth of revenue. So we went from a million down to half a million pounds worth of revenue. That's not good, but that's what happens in leisure businesses. How did I fix it to turn it into a more profitable business? Because really, at half a million pounds, you're breaking even. You're paying the staff, the rents, the overheads and all the other bits and bobs that come in. And I'll show you on a spreadsheet what that looks like in a minute. This was my genius idea, creating MRS. Let's talk about that right now. This was the genius that I had multiple revenue streams that fold into existing empire. Over here in this very technically drawn diagram represents a play center, a soft play center business. And behind the yellow sheet is the mystery of how I solved the business. What I did was carved off part of the play center and create a multiple revenue stream. And I was thinking about what could really complement the business. So I call this multiple revenue streams now that fold into existing empire. It's one of the key things that I teach in my entrepreneurs university. By the way, let me tell you about my Entrepreneurs University. I've created this online training platform for entrepreneurs and business owners to soar to success, where I teach everything from getting customers, keeping customers, growing profitability, how to buy companies, where there's little money as possible, something I've done over 12 times now. And you can try it free on my website, jamesinclair.net, or there's a link in the video description. Give the Entrepreneurs University a try. It'll grow your business. Right, back to this. So this represents my building. I've got this play center, which costs you know, half a million quid to break even. All I need to do is build a business that's less fickle, the higher barrier to entry that has loyal customers. Because I realized my plate center customers only came once or twice a year. In fact, they only come 1.5 times. Like most leisure businesses, like a restaurant, like a nightclub, you don't go to a nightclub every Friday, Saturday night for four or five years to the same one. You like to have a little look around. You like to try new restaurants. But as a business, we don't want that. We want the average transactional value and the average customer value and the average lifetime value to be higher on all three points. Here, I've got low average customer value, low average lifetime value, and low average transactional value, which makes it really problematic as a business. Over here, everything started to change when I opened a day nursery because this business has high average transactional value. Most people come three or four times a week. The average customer value is really good. On average, it's 750 pounds a month. Over here, it's about 20 pounds a visit. Can you see the difference here? And the lifetime value is when the child starts with you, they stay for on average four years. That's much, much better. So by combining the two, I turn it into a much more profitable business. Now let me show you this on a spreadsheet right now. Right guys, this is the budgets that I produce for all of my sites for my businesses. I just want to move on to show you one of my sites, Braintree, that I haven't got a day nursery in. So I bought this business not making much money. We've improved the leisure business um, and you can see here it's admissions. £263,000 at the end of the year. Food and sales, uh, food and beverage sales of 175. Um, a bit of memberships of 17,600. And then this 38,000, which is the start of childcare for the whole year. Basically, that business generates just shy of half a million pounds of net turnover. That's not including that. Now, the thing that you need to remember here is this is the start of the pandemic and there's low business rates and low VAT. So this is actually an inflated turnover. But down here is the real profit number. This is the bit I want you to see. This play center is only making 37,000 net profit. You don't need a lot to go wrong on half a million of turnover to completely take that out. You'll also notice here with the red numbers that these are loss making months. April, May, June, because it's hot in the UK in those months, less people want to come inside, etc, etc. That's the problem. Now, this sheet over here shows you our Stevenage site, which is in Hertfordshire. Now, look at the revenues here, 946,000, so nearly double the amount of turnover. But the plate centre turnover is pretty much the same, 263, the food and beverage um, is uh, pretty much the same. But this number here, this 385, which I'm just 
just going to underline in red is the childcare revenue. Now, this nursery has been open about six years now, but look at the difference to the bottom line. Nearly all of that money, nearly all of it, goes to the bottom line. Now, we've got wages there that have come out. That's the big difference. Creating that multiple revenue stream, folding into existing empire, generates £326,000 of profit because all the overheads are being covered by the existing business. So at the start of this video, we said the average revenue for a play center was 500,000 pounds. And I showed you the profits of one of our standalone play centers, 30 to 50 to 60 to 70,000 pounds. What I'm saying here is on a business that's got 500,000 pounds worth of turnover, if you have something that goes wrong that costs you 10% more than you expected, then all your profits gone. You've got lots of standing costs. The rent, and what some of our rents are 80 to 100,000 pounds. Your business rates could be 50,000 pounds a year. Then you've got the staff and then you've got your utilities costs. So they're covering the standing costs, they're covering the maintenance, they're covering all of those bits and bobs. So how do you really go to the next level? You've got a number of things. You can continually put CapEx into the play center and become the biggest in the area so that you're unique. Now I do know some play centers in the UK doing a million and a half of revenue, two million of revenue, but they're in really high footfall population areas. All of ours are in high footfall population areas, but they're also the biggest and the best and the most unique. I questioned that they make any money though because they've had huge capex investment plans put into the business and they're continually capex in them so all the profits they make they reinvest back in now i don't mind doing that for a few years but you don't want to get a 65 and using all of the money that you generate to reinvest back into the business you need to make sure it stands alone and that high barrier to entry is what can really protect you if you can be the one big thing i want to tell you a little story now that i want to share with you when i was about 23 i was sitting at dinner at a leisure conference and I was sitting next to someone that owns a theme park and I said look we're the largest chain of indoor play centers in the country why don't you open some indoor play centers and they said we wouldn't do that because it's too low barrier to entry people could compete with us very easily but people can't just go and open theme parks very easily it's a big aha moment for me of how to make your business higher barrier to entry to protect yourselves and that's why I came up with the MRS that folds into EE multiple revenue streams that fold into existing empire that's what day nurseries did for me so rather than making just 30 to 50 thousand pounds profit per site by adding on the day nursery the rent was already paid the rates were already paid the utilities were already paid i'm really sweating the existing overhead and that's why some of our play centers can make 200 to 300 thousand pounds worth of profit when you merge the two businesses together for more top tips like this make sure you check out the rest of my youtube channel let me know what you think about this video in the comments below subscribe to the channel make sure you do that by clicking here and if you've liked this video please hit that like button and watch this video here because YouTube's recommending that you're gonna like it. See ya, bye bye.